All right, so let me share my screen and uh, looks like for the first part of it, you'll probably just be taking some notes here about what is a parabola. Okay, so a para parabola is sometimes referred to as U-shaped. Okay, and there's two forms. It either opens up or it opens down. But the key characteristic is that it either has a min or it has a max. But it can't have more than one of these. It either, either opens up and has a min, opens down and has a max. All right. So let me show you some that are not so that you can get a, an idea of what is not. So the following are not parabolas. Get this snipped in. Okay, this is not a parabola. Can you tell me why this is not a parabola? Um, there, it's not a straight U. Yeah, it's not a U. I mean, that's the easiest way. Like, like this first part's a U, but then and then this other part's a U, but it has to either open down or has to open up. There are no exceptions to this. Nothing to be, no exceptions to this. So you can also notice that it either starts high and ends high, starts low and ends low. And that's another way to, uh, to look at it. Now, that doesn't work for everything, but um, now let's take a look at it again. It, and I hate when we do this because it's like we're, we're looking at all these like exceptions, but you need to know which ones are not. Okay. So this one is not a parabola. Can you tell me why? It's a V instead of a U. It's a V instead of a U. Yeah. And you, you know, it, it is something but it's not, it's not a parabola. Okay, I think you got that down. Okay, now let's look at, let's look at an equation of a parabola here. So this is an equation of a parabola. We know that because of this right here. X squared means parabola. Okay, it has to be the highest term though, meaning like you can't have an x cubed, an x to the fourth, you'll see that later in the course or next, next course, but x squared means parabola, okay? Now this number in front, whether it's positive or negative, this tells you whether it opens up or down. Do you remember that from class notes? Anything about that? No. Okay, so they call this A, this leading term A, and it opens up if A is greater than zero and opens down if A is less than zero. So basically positive opens up, negative if it opens down. So what do you say about this one? Does it open up or down? It opens down. It opens down. So let's look at these again these two parabolas. Here's the one that opens up. This is when A is greater than zero. And this is the one that opens down when A is less than zero. Okay. Now, if it's opening up, it has a min. We already, we've already written this, but we're going to just do it again here. If it opens down, it has a max. You might be thinking, well, why am I showing this to you? Well, you're supposed to know this, Jeremiah. You're supposed to be able to look at this equation right here and tell me that it opens down because it's negative. It opens down because it's negative and that it has a max. Now, if you were in a classroom, you would see students with their fingers drawing a parabola up, down, or up. And since you don't have, you can do that if you want, or you can draw one of these but that's really important to be able to do. You need to get a chance to practice here. I'm gonna give you another problem here to look at. And again, notice I didn't, I didn't mention like the size of the number. I don't care if it's 7.7. 7. I only care whether it's positive or negative. Okay. So first question to you, Jeremiah, is why is this a parabola? 
Um, because it's got x squared. Because it's got x squared. That's all you got to say, x squared. Now, does it open up or down? And that's based on this number that I just circled in front of x squared. It opens up. It opens up. Okay, which is because A is greater than zero. Now, what I would do is draw this, draw something that opens up and then say, oh, that point at the bottom must be A, and then you fill in the blank. What is that point at the bottom? It's the um, vertex, but what, is it, what does it mean? Min? Min. Yeah, and you're supposed to be able to say all that. Now, a, a strategy here on uh, on these um, questions where you have to choose multiple options, it's almost never all of them. It's usually like two of four. Maybe you figured out how the, the grading works, but I would I would recommend not choosing all of them. I would recommend trying to, you know, see which one works out, see which two are correct. All right, so now we move on to, actually, let me give you a couple more here. Let me give you a couple more here. So let's say it's y equals negative two x squared plus a thousand x minus five. Can you tell me if this opens up or down and whether it has a min or a max, please? It goes down and it's got a max. That's it, it's that, it's that simple. There's never an exception. There's never like, oh, it opens down and it has a min. That would be weird. It, it has to be consistent across there. Okay, let's look at, boy, these are awful. Um, are you allowed to use a calculator in this course? Uh, yes. And do you use a hand, like, do you have a TI-8384? No, I have my phone. You have your phone, okay. All right. Um, All right, let me show you how to do this a little bit by hand, and then I'll give you give you some help to using uh, something else that could be worthwhile. So the uh, the problem that you were given here was to match them up with the table. I know you got it right here, but I just want to at least uh, cover this um, in case it was unclear. So the the easiest thing to do here is to try numbers that are positive. So when you try like x equals one, you're plugging it in for x. Now notice I am substituting in parentheses. Okay, very important. It, even more important when you're dealing with negatives. All right, now you have to remember your order of operations to be able to simplify this. So for example, you square first. What is one squared, do you remember? Um, one square is um, one. One. It's like one times one. So this is two times one minus eight times one plus 16. Two times one is two. Eight times one is eight plus 16. Okay. And then you, um, and then you, uh, uh, add left to right or, or, or operate left to right. So you're going to do two minus eight. Can you tell me that? Uh, two minus eight? Yes. Six. Try again. Two minus eight? Yeah. The eight is negative. So the answer must be negative. Oh, okay. Negative six. Negative six plus 16. Can you tell me that? Ten. It is ten. Yeah. Okay. Now, where this gets really more challenging is when you have negative numbers. Okay. So now we're gonna look at it with negative numbers, and this is like your SAT style of question. Um, they do have questions where you literally just have to put the number into the function and get the output. So again, I like to do it in parentheses. I always substitute in parentheses, and if you're watching me work out a problem for myself, I would, I would generally do this. Um, I, I try not to tell you things that I wouldn't do because it's just a best, best practice. So again, order of operations, 
you're going to do the exponent first, negative one squared first. Can you tell me what that is? Negative one? Um, so, so as a reminder, it means negative one times negative one. Oh, so it's negative one. I mean, nope, one. two negatives make a positive. So it's one. So it's one, yeah. Okay, and that's it's critical. It's critical that you be able to do that. So it's two times one. You might say, well, it's the same as before. Well, eight times negative one is not eight. Eight times negative one is negative eight. And the negative eight with the plus, with the minus here. So you have a minus eight mm -hmm. times negative one. You can think of it as negative eight times negative one or eight times negative one and then you negate it. It ends up being plus eight. Okay. Uh, so two plus eight plus 16, can you tell me that? Um, 26. Give me that one more time, sorry. What did you say? I didn't, I didn't hear you. 26, maybe. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you something here. Um, I know you like using your phone. I. I I mean, phones are, they, they, they have so much potential, okay? But it's not really the right, unless you've got a like Desmos scientific on your phone, I'm gonna tell you not to, uh, to use it uh, on your phone. Let, try going something like this. So let's, let's watch, if you're seeing my screen, you see what, I, what we did for the first, uh, first number. Do you remember how we said X is one? Uh, yes. And I'm gonna hit enter, okay? And this is, this is the power of this tool. So 2x squared minus 8x plus 16, is that the same value that we found when we did it earlier? Um, yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Now here's the power. If I change this to negative one, I get the new answer. If I change it to two, I get another answer. Change it to three, get another answer. Now your, your, your TI 8384 will do this as well. You said you didn't have one. So I would encourage you to use a tool uh, like this. Let me send you a link to the chat in that. Um, it's okay to use this to help reduce the calculations that you're doing. All right, so uh, let me do this. Let me go back to the other screen and let me give you one to try here. All right, so let's say we're looking at y equals minus three halves x squared plus one fourth x minus two. And I want y, I'm sorry, I want x to equal negative one. Okay, so I'd like you to try that Desmos scientific for this. Do you have the ability to pull that up and, and try uh, that yes. out? Okay.
do it on that one, Jeremiah. I put it in the calculator, but it's not showing an answer. Okay, so let me let me share my screen, and maybe uh, uh, maybe there's something that you're not doing that. Uh, let's let me go back to that screen. Okay, so here's my screen. Did you type in x equals minus one and then hit enter? No, I typed the entire problem. Okay, so that, that's going to that's gonna hurt you. So what you can do is you can go to the beginning of the uh, line and hit it. Well, I guess it doesn't do that that way. All right, well, um, take a look at this on your own sometime. I would recommend trying to use it. It really will help. Um, but let's move on to a new topic. And um, you can see the answers. I was, I was just going to show you also that you can convert it to a, to a fraction. Okay, so our new topic, I'm going to go to the graphing calculator. And I'm going to graph a parabola, y equals x squared. Are you able to see that on my screen, that parabola? Yes. Now, it has a line of symmetry at x equals 0. And here's what that means. Here's the right side of the parabola. OK. And then let me do this. Sorry, I just need a moment here. This uh, thing, I should have had this set up. Didn't think to do that. Let me go. No, 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 no. Settings. All right, done. Okay, here we go. So the this 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 parabola is mirrored on the right and the left. It's the same on the right as it is on the left. Now, do you notice that that blue line goes through the bottom of the parabola? Yes. So here's the here's the takeaway. The line of symmetry, and I'll write this down. The line of symmetry always goes through the vertex, always goes to the vertex. So we're going to go back and do some problems, but our summary, and it doesn't matter, doesn't matter whether the parabola opens up or it opens down, okay? It always goes through the vertex. That vertex is the min or the max. So your line of symmetry goes through the vertex. All right, uh, so to, so, so let's do this. So your, your assignment gave you a problem like this and they said, what is the line of symmetry? They gave you, gave you a quadratic that looks just like this, okay? Now there's, a, there's kind of a shortcut here, um, which I actually don't, I don't care for here, but I, don't, I guess that's what they're doing. Um, why are they doing this? Okay, so we're gonna foil this. Okay, do you remember foil from a previous lesson? Yes. X times X is X squared. X times 16 is 16 X. 14 times X is 14 X. 14 times 16. Do you have that Desmos uh, calculator still up? Can you calculate that for me? Um, let me yeah, I still had a little bit. Okay. What is 14 times 16? Um, 14 times 16 is 224. 224, very good. Now, do you see that you can combine the these two inner terms here? Um, yes. All right, so that's x squared plus 30x plus 224. Okay, now you're going to see this in a future lesson, but we're going to start with it now because this will this will move you for move you forward. The standard form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. A is the number in front of x squared. What is the number in front of x squared that's not written? One. One. 
And how about the number in front of B or in front of X, which is B? 30. 30. And C is the other number 225. Okay. Now the X coordinate of the vertex, I know we did a lot here. You, you're going to have, we're going to have to foil a couple of these and we're going to have to write this, but the X coordinate of the vertex is the following. It is minus B divided by 2A. So you take your B value. What's your B value? Um, 30. 30. And what's your A value? Um, one. One. Okay. So you've got to be able to simplify this. Okay, so minus 30 over two, what does that equal? And if you need to use that, that calculator, please do that. Negative 15. Negative 15, good. And that right there, that right there is, is your axis of symmetry. The X coordinate of the vertex. All right, so let's try another one here. Or if you need a moment to get these notes down, let me know. No, I'm good. Okay. All right, so here you go. Here's another problem. We need to foil this. So we need to foil these problems. Okay. So what is X times X, Jeremiah? X times X is X squared. Okay. And then you got X times minus 17. Minus 17, that's minus 17X positive 13 times x. And then this last one, I want you to grab that calculator again. Uh, 13 times minus 17, or open it up. Tell me what 13 times minus 17. Negative 221. Good, okay. Now you gotta be able to co combine these, these inner terms, minus 17x plus 13x. What is minus 17 plus 13? Um, it's okay if you need to use that Desmos calculator. It's a really a good tool to use. Negative four. Yep, x squared minus 4x minus 221. Now I'm writing the standard form of a quadratic below it. And you've got to tell me the values of a, b, and c. Now keep in mind, they always take on the operator. So like, like b, for example, would take on this negative sign. C takes on this, this negative sign. But let's start with a. What is the value of a? One. Charlie? One. How about b? Negative 4x. It's, it's just a number, it's okay. just a number. So you, 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 no X's, um, and how about C? Negative 221. Good. Now the X coordinate of the vertex, the axis of symmetry is minus B over 2A. Like everything we did was to get it into this form so that you could figure out the axis of symmetry. So that's minus a minus four over two times one. Can you uh, simplify that for me, please? Okay. It is two. So that's your axis of symmetry, x equals two. All right, so let me, uh, let me make up a little bit easier one here because I, 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 don't, I don't know why your problems were chosen so large. Let's go x minus five, x plus three. I want you to foil that for me, please. Okay, so x minus three, x squared. X times three would be three X. Negative five times X, which is three 
Negative five x. Sounds good. Then Go keep working through it. Negative five times three, which is negative fifteen. Okay, so give me your give me your simplified answer. You've got to combine that minus five x and that three x. You want your final final answer? Okay. Um, But x squared minus 2x15. Good. OK. Now, can you tell me the value of a, b, and c? Uh, a is 1, b is 2, negative 2. OK. And then c is negative 15. Good. Now, I want you to calculate minus b over 2a. Um, a Negative two. You're guessing. You got to substitute the numbers in minus a minus two. Two times one. You got to write it out. There's no way to do it without writing it out. You've got to put that down on paper, and then you can you can work through it. Negative one. It's uh, positive two over two, which is positive one. You you missed a sign somewhere when you were entering that in the calculator. See how oh. the two negatives cancel? Yeah, but that um, is your that is your axis of symmetry. You had a question? No. You sure? I'm sure. Okay. All right. So that is probably it for tonight. Um, you, you, this will help you finish up the uh, couple of assignments you had to do today. Um, yeah, sounds sounds like if you can get that other thing turned in, your grade will be boosted here. Keep dad happy. Keep you eligible for jujitsu. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I hope you have a great weekend, and uh, we'll, I'll see you on, on uh, Tuesday. We'll just keep keep at it. You're doing a great job. Okay. Bye, Matt. You're welcome. Okay. Bye.